Your host tonight is the co-chair of the Denver American Indian Commission, uh, the Jumbotron host for the Colorado Mammoth, and a founding member of Denver and Comedy. Um, so he'll be hosting tonight, introducing the rest of your comics, and I hope you all have a great time. Um, let me please give a warm welcome for Joshua Emerson. <laughs> I'm Native American. Yeah, Colorado Native without the bumper sticker, okay? <laughs> yeah, I, that's why I named the show that, because that dumbass bumper sticker. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, this show, this show is built around Native joy, okay? Growing up, the funniest people in my life, yeah, exactly, we're, we're, we're Natives, all right? They always cracking jokes. Uh, I'm Navajo. We have a ceremony for when a baby laughs for the first time, okay? Uh, and then you're not allowed ever to laugh ever again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's true. <laughs> I still do it, though, you know? But, uh, yeah, I... Also, going back to the res, uh, I, I would get my ass roasted all the fucking time. Tonight, I've been roasted three times for wearing cargo shorts, man. <laughs> Fuck you, they look good, all right? I don't know what you're talking about. It's an aesthetic, okay? All right, I make Urban Native look good, all right? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, natives are funny. That's just a true fact. And, and, and they're always the funniest to me. But when I decided to take comedy more seriously a, as a career and going through the club system, I looked around and there weren't any natives around. And that made me very sad. Uh, and, and there's this idea that, that comedy is, is this beautiful art form where you're able to talk about gross, disgusting, important, uh, uh, uncomfortable things, and you're able to create this tension in the audience, and you're able to release it with a punchline. It's, it's a powerful art form because you're able to say true things on stage that make people uh, tighten their asshole up. <laughs> and then you're able to say, tighten your asshole up, and people laugh, you know? That's, uh, <laughs> and, and, and I guess what I wanted to see, I want to see more Native comics out there. I wanted to create an opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, create, create opportunities like this. Look how fucking big this stage is, man. I can't see any of you. That's how expensive these lights are. This is high dollar shit. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, that's, that's what this show is. It, it's, it's an opportunity for, for, to bring all, all the uh, indigenous brothers and sisters and everywhere in between, all over Turtle Island, to, to Colorado, have them showcase for y'all, uh, create a little bit of culture, share in a little bit of empathy, uh, have natives see themselves on stage. If you wanna do this, if you're a native youth in the audience, or an old person, but I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I care more about the youth, you know. <laughs> I know too many old, bitter natives. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of you are here tonight. <laughs> uh, I just want y'all to know that you can do this. You can do this. You can do this. It's true. Uh, don't. It's terrible, okay? <laughs> but you can do this. All right. Yeah. And we got a great show for you tonight, man. Uh, honestly, uh, uh, we, uh, the comics are funny, and we're going to have a great time. And with that, can, can we just get a little bit of energy in the room again, man? Just let me know you're with me. <laughs> I feel it, man. This is sacred in here, man. I'm indigenous, okay? And I don't mean like Elizabeth Warren indigenous. I mean... <laughs> actually indigenous, all right? When I sweat, I smell like a buffalo, all right? <laughs> well, I'm Navajo, so I smell like a goat, but don't <laughs> worry about it, all right? I play indigenous Monopoly, uh, which is just regular Monopoly. <laughs> 
except that nobody doesn't own any property. <laughs> To like halfway through the game, a new player joins in and suddenly owns all the property. <laughs> and then I go to roll the dice. I'm like, where'd all these goddamn railroads come from? What do you mean go straight to jail? <laughs> if, that, if that joke made you feel uncomfortable, uh, Venmo me, bitch. What are we <laughs> talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, this show, every now and again, it will bring out just a bunch of NPR whites, which is, you know, I'm, I'm happy you're here, all right? But, but this show in particular, I saw a lot of natives in the crowd, man. Make some noise if you're native right now. I just want to hear. Damn. <laughs> you all got off probation at the same time? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Uh, see, see, I, I'm Navajo, all right? My mom's Navajo, that makes me Navajo, uh, except that my dad's white, and that makes me a Nava bro. <laughs> uh, uh, but I'll let you in on a secret, I'm a little fucking slut, uh, uh, and that makes me a Navajo again, okay? <laughs> that joke still works if you're half white and a Rapaho, so... <laughs> if there's any little Plains bitches in the audience tonight, you know... Feel free to use it, okay? Have fun riding horses and eating dogs and shit. I don't... Oh. <laughs> you feel the anger rising, man? <laughs> Just tomahawks start flying at me. <laughs> I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, that's why. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, what, what, what? Just shout out your area code. I just want to know. <laughs> you said 702? That's Denver, silly goose. 602, all right, 602 I fuck with, okay? If you said 480, I would kick you out right now, okay? Yeah, I'm doing Phoenix area code jokes in Denver, cool. I'm a 623 guy myself, so hit me up if you want weed after the show, okay? <laughs> I, I, I'm from Phoenix, uh, that's why I sound so stupid. Uh, I, I grew up dehydrated. <laughs> Best air conditioning in the fucking world though, man. <laughs> and that juxtaposition between 150 degrees on the outside and that cold Arctic blast as you walk inside, ah, it's spiritual. <laughs> I walked into Safeway, got hit with that Holy Ghost, just that, I forgave my dad. <laughs> Powerful stuff, okay. Uh, I love being an ambassador for my people. Uh, this is true. There's this trend on native social media. Uh, when natives graduate, they'll, they'll put their graduation photos up on Instagram with a caption that says, I am my ancestors' wildest dreams. Wildest, uh, bitch, calm down. <laughs> You went to Arizona State, first of all, okay? <laughs> Second of all, I've done cocaine off a Caucasian woman's titty. Uh, if anybody's our ancestors' wildest dreams, it's fucking me. <laughs> I told that joke in Colorado Springs, and after the show, a fat white man came up to me, and he was like, titty line? <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it to anyone. <laughs> Bacon flavored Coke, you know? So. <laughs> no, man. No, I am trying to learn my language, Denebizad, as it's known. This is true. There's no words in the Navajo language for the phrase, I'm sorry. Uh, who knew my ex girlfriend was Navajo? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is also true. Uh, the Navajo word for butthole literally translates to the pink skin inside the hole. Uh, and that made me proud to be Navajo, okay? Because <laughs> you don't find out that there's pink skin inside the hole without doing a little bit of digging, now do you? <laughs> if you don't eat ass, you're a colonizer. <laughs> and if you do eat ass, you're a colonizer. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, my favorite part about eating ass uh, is the bacon bits at the very end, okay? <laughs> Fuck you, let me be me. 
<laughs> Ew. <laughs> I served six years at the United States Marine Corps. Uh, it's actually where I learned how to eat ass. You know? <laughs> Uh, uh, actually, I joined for the marijuana discount, all right? 15% off for the rest of my life. I've saved northwards of $6 million, all right? <laughs> Veterans are shameless about our discount. I, I once watched my friend at, ask a, 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 a prostitute if she had a military discount. God bless her, she did! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like white women because I like making my ancestors cry. Uh, but I would never date a white girl named Dakota or Cheyenne. Because uh, I'm Navajo and I'm loyal, you know. Every time I hook up with a white girl, I like to steal a scrunchie from her house and wear it on my wrist like a scalp. I got a fucking scrunchie in my hair right now, y'all. I'll be selling scrunchies after the show. Okay. Yeah, I started wearing scrunchies after I saw uh, my, uh, after I saw Jason Momoa wear a scrunchie. And, and for brown men with long hair, Jason Momoa is the fucking pinnacle, okay? Yeah, yeah, Jason Momoa is what I would look like if I drank that potion in Shrek 2. I don't like how loud y'all laughed at that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm sexy as fuck, I know it. Hey guys, y'all ready to get a comedy show started? <laughs> this first comic, he's a Denver local, but he, he hails from the Comanche Nation. Make some noise for Evan Johnson. Hello, yes, my last name is Johnson. I am Native American, don't worry. Uh, people love to ask when I tell them I'm Native, they're like, well, if your last name is Johnson, how are you Native American? How'd that happen? How'd your last name become Johnson if you're Native American? I love to ask those people, how do you think that happened? Why don't you look me in my brown face and tell me you think that happened, you honky honk honk, why don't you? I'll tell you, it wasn't, definitely wasn't one of those <laughs> consensual situations. All right, cool. The front row's no history. Awesome. Right. I uh, do have a confession to make. Uh, when Josh booked me for this show, I was very drunk. And he was, I, I like to, because I'm ethnic, eth ethnically ambiguous, I like to fuck with people. I say what, I lie about what tribe I am, what race I am all the time, just to fuck with other comedians. But he was like, dude, you have to tell me what like tribe you are for this show if you're gonna do the show and again very drunk and I was just like I can't uh, it's, I'm the the C one <laughs> and he was like Comanche and I was like yeah 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 whatever <laughs> uh, I'm Cherokee I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah so cheers. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, dude, I don't know. I get lots of silly questions about being Native American. Like, my best friend, I remember years ago, he asked me, uh, like, when the Redskins changed their name, that football team, he was like, are you glad that the Redskins changed their name? Like, was it offensive to you as a Native person that there was a football team called the Redskins? Was that offensive to you? And I was like, I'm much more offended by the fact that you've known me for, like, 10 years and think I give a fuck about sports. And as... <laughs> You guys have known me for 10 seconds. You can tell I don't give a fuck about sports. It's not <laughs> what any of this says. Like, what? <laughs> I don't know. Growing up, uh, uh, I'm, I'm native and also uh, uh, half Spanish, uh, which means growing up, my mom was racist. Um, she, and the way I found that out was because like, people would come up to her all the time like asking what race she was. Like, she's browner than me. Like, her mustache, way thicker. And, <laughs> People would come up to her like at her job like while she was working and they would ask what race she was like all, like all the time, but specifically if people asked if she was Mexican, her response to that was, fuck you, get the fuck out of my store right now. I, will, I told you to leave, now you're trespassing, I can call the cops. Get the fuck out of my store right now. By the way, she didn't own a store, she just worked at Office Depot. <laughs> she's kicking people out of Office Depot for asking if she's Mexican. And to re reiterate, we're Native American and Spanish. 
which mathematically <laughs> that's a goddamn Mexican. That's what goes into a Mexican. That's what that is. It's not only as my mom a dumb racist, she's a dumb racist Mexican. That's what she is. <laughs> yeah, man. I, uh, I was getting shit on by uh, another comic recently, like another brown comic. They were being like, oh, you're a self-hating brown person. You have too many white friends. You have, you have too many white friends. You're a self-hating brown person. I was like, first of all, yes, but that's depression. That has nothing to do with my race. I'm just... I can be brown and depressed. This is two things that are true. Yeah, okay, but... But also, I get to have white friends. I grew up here in Colorado, which, I don't know if you know this, today at its most diverse is 86% white people, all right? That's with as many browns as we've ever had. That's, it. That has my, that's a lot of white people. Not only that, I grew up here in Colorado in a town called Highlands Ranch, Colorado. I can tell this side of the room definitely knows what it is. If, if some of the people over here don't know what it is, you don't have to know what it is because it's white as fuck because the second word in it is ranch. <laughs> All right, so that's something white people love to do, live on, and eat. <laughs> All right, so I get to have a friend named Asher. All right, I think I've earned that. Also, go up in Highlands Ranch was fucked up, man. Cause like there, there was very few like brown kids in my school. I, I would get called the wrong racial slurs like all the time. Like they would call me the N word and all this stuff. And like that was fucked up. But what's even more fucked up is that now, as a grown man, when I get called the correct racial slurs, much too congratulatory to those people. <laughs> Someone calls me an engine. I'm just like first try, nice. Like there's. <laughs> I don't even feel bad about it. I'm just like, okay, someone calls me a spick. I'm just like, you see me. You see me. You know I'm half. That's incredible. I can't believe it. I don't know, dude. <laughs> I, uh, I am a bad Hispanic person, too, because uh, I don't speak any Spanish. Like, I can understand a little bit, but I don't speak a much at all. And I am also not brave enough to admit that sometimes. Like, I had, I've had girls, like, ask me, like, to, to, like, say stuff in Spanish to them in bed, and I'll just fake it. I'll just be like... Feliz Navidad, did it, did it, did it. I'm like, it's August. What are you even saying right now? It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I, uh, I, uh, I like to think that I'm pretty, like, woke when it comes to race stuff. Uh, but I do think you have to do the woke stuff correctly. Like, you gotta, like, actually put effort into it. Like, the new Star Wars movies are a great example. Like, when they added that, that new black character to the new Star Wars movies. It was, I love that. It was great. It made all the racists mad because they're stupid. Don't remember that Lando's already a black guy in Star Wars. They're all fucking, there's no black guy. What's it, Lando's already a thing? But then they just ruined that guy's character throughout those three movies. Johnny Boyega's character just got worse and worse throughout those three movies. And that's insulting to a little brown kid watching those movies. Like, I loved Star Wars as a kid, and I didn't need Han Solo to be Hispanic for me to like those movies when I was a little kid. I just either imagined he's brown in the movies or I'm white when I play him. That's just... And also, Han Solo deals drugs throughout the galaxy. He drives around in a shitbox car, and his best friend's name is Chewie. Sounds pretty Hispanic to me. <laughs> sounds like my uncle and his best friend, Chewy. That's what that sounds like. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Speaking of Chewy, and this is a true story. Uh, I, worked, I used to work at a very fancy restaurant uh, called The Melting Pot. I don't know if you guys have ever been in there. Uh, I, they fucking hated me. They did, I was not a good fit for that place, just swearing and being an idiot all the time. They didn't, I didn't like, the, like, there was one time, I remember, uh, there was a gentleman there who worked as a bartender, and he looked exactly like Peter Mayhew, who, if you don't know, is the guy who played Chewbacca in all the Star Wars movies, a big, tall dude inside the Wookiee suit. And he, he, like, looked identical to him, so I told him one day, I was like, hey, man, I, you look just like Peter Mayhew. And he's like, I don't know who that is. And I'm like, that's crazy. No one's ever told you. He's the guy who played Chewbacca in all the Star Wars movies. I swear to God, you could be his twin. It's crazy no one's ever said that to you. And this grown 50-year-old man, I swear to God, looked me in the face and goes, fuck you, dude. <laughs> Which made me realize that this guy thinks that the guy who played Chewbacca <laughs> fucking looks like Chewbacca. Thinks George Lucas is walking around in the 70s on Hollywood just being like, I can't find a bear dog man hybrid. I don't know where I'm going. Oh my God, there he is. And he was like, Rrr! and the rest was space history? What the fuck is he thinking? 
yeah, they hated me at that job, man. They, I remember I, this, this, this story happened actually like a week before I got fired, so I'm like pretty sure it's why I got fired. Uh, they were playing that game, uh, Fuck, Mary Kill. Like, we all play that game, you know that game? We all play it at work. It's, and it's like the point of it is to like make it like kind of embarrassing. Like, we all know the person you want to fuck and the person you want to marry and the person you want to kill amongst our friend group. Now imagine, I guess I didn't understand the rules at the time and I got flustered. And Now imagine everyone at work knows the one person you want to do all three of those things to. Because that's what happened to me. They were like, Evan, who do you want to fuck me and kill? And I was like, Jacob. <laughs> so my relationship with the janitor really changed after that. Um, <laughs> I got my station clean first. <laughs> I, uh, I'm kind of neurotic about my looks. Uh, I, I dress nice. I know I'm a sexy boy, but uh, like, <laughs> but also like I get you know I, I'll get insulted a lot like on accident. Even like a guy like I thought this guy I was about to this happened to me on uh, South Broadway. I was walking down and this guy came up to me and he goes, "Bro, you look like that guy from The Mandalorian." And instead of assuming he meant like Pedro Pascal, the Mandalorian, very popular actor, Last of Us, Game of Thrones, other things, I was fully ready to fight this dude because I thought he meant Baby Yoda. I was. <laughs> I was like, he has a name, it's Grogu, bitch. Like, I was ready to go after him. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm, I'm sh I don't know, I'm short too, and you get accidentally roasted for that. Like, I remember once I was with my grandparents, and I was wearing like this trench coat thing. Like, it was a, a trench coat, I was wearing a trench coat. And my grandfather, my grandfather, he goes, is that a, is that a trench coat, is that, look at that, that kind of jacket would be called, would you consider that a trench coat? I'm not a fashion guy, is that a trench coat? And before I can say yes, my grandmother just hits him, and she goes, no, Lee, that's a regular size jacket. It just looks big on him. Fuck you, Grandma. What the hell? Glad you got COVID. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. She's dead. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, dude. I get, yeah, the accidental insult. I also, like, I'll get insulted. Like, this, this has been happening to me recently. Is that, like, uh, after, I'll, like, the last, like, three women I've, like, hooked up with, uh, afterwards, they'll look at me. I swear to God. They'll just be like, man, bisexual guys really lay down the best dick. I am not bisexual. <laughs> They're just being like, man, you pump pussy like you suck cock or something. I don't know what's going on, but it's working for you. <laughs> like, feels like I'm betraying you if I tell you I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I don't know. I get confused. I mean, honestly, like, that's better than what I mostly get when I'm like, trying to hit on women because I get confused for a gay man like, every time I try to hit on a girl. Like, every, like, it's, gotten a gra like it's gotten to a bad point. Like, I genuinely feel at this point like I can look a woman in her face and be like, I want to eat your pussy. And her response would just be like, <laughs> gay guys eat pussy now? That's so, <laughs> that's crazy. I don't know. I guess it's 2023. Anyone can do anything. That's pretty cool. That's great. <laughs> Oh no, man. Also, uh, I used to have really like long, like shoulder length hair, like kind of like Dave Grohl length hair. And uh, I did a tour in the Midwest and I was getting confused for a woman constantly. Like it was so much, this is true. I was at a uh, hotel with my girlfriend at the time and we checked in and I'm a dumb stoner idiot. So I forgot something in the car, I had to go back to the car. And again, dumb stoner idiot, immediately forgot the room number we were in. So I had to go back to the concierge. I was like, hey, I'm very forgetful. I know we checked in 90 seconds ago, but I forgot the room number you gave us. Would you mind just telling me? I just had to go get some in the car. Would you mind telling me what room number we're in? And this lady goes, actually, sir, I cannot give you that information because it was two females who checked into that room. <laughs> you understand what? She, that means I both look like a woman and like someone who would kill two women. What the f <laughs> She's like, for those girls' protection, I can't tell you that. I'm like, I'm one of those girls. What are you, <laughs> what's going on right now? I feel like I'm in a Chris Nolan movie. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Just confused, man. I don't know. I'm a, a skinny boy, and uh, I've gotten this a lot, speaking of stuff that's been said to me after uh, sex, is uh, I've had this basically every time a woman's seen me naked. Every time they haven't been like, God, your body's so sexy. You're like, God, I, I just love your body. But what they have said every time without fail is, God, I wish I had your body. <laughs> Not a compliment, ladies, just an FYI. If you're like, you know what would make you really hot is if you didn't have the head of the top of Tio guy. That'd be really, that'd actually be very attractive. <laughs> 
Uh, I don't know. I'm also hairy, too, which is not, like, a great... Like, I'm not... Like, we all see my chest, and I have, like, chest hair. But I do have, like, a good head. I have hairy arm. Like, I'm not hairy the way, like, a, like a manly man is hairy, right? Like, I'm hairy the way, like, a, like a piece of gum that fell on the floor <laughs> is hairy. Like, you can't tell where it begins or where it ends, you know? Like, like, each of my nipples has a different kind of male pattern baldness, if you feel me. Like... One keeps pretending he has a faux hawk, the other just looks like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. Like, it's just... Like, to give you guys a perspective, I have two happy trails. One in the front and one in the back. And here's some insider info for y'all. That's not two happy trails, that's just one unhappy U-turn. That's all that is. Yeah, I call it the Trail of Tears to honor my native heritage. Right? It's... I knew that was gonna kill here. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, I'll, uh, I'll get off with this quick little story uh, that has basically nothing to do with the rest of my material, but I like telling it. Um, I'm gonna age myself here because uh, uh, when I was in kindergarten, 9-11 happened. Uh, not to the building, obviously, those were way far away. But 9-11 happened like when I was in this class, and uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but you can't tell a bunch of like eight-year-olds that a plane flew into a building because their response would just be like, rad. Like, they just, think it's, they just think it's cool. But here's the thing, is that what our teachers did was not any better, because what they did do was they came in and they basically were like, hey guys, so um, something happened, and you gotta go home early now. You get a, after lunch, you gotta have recess, and then you gotta go home early. You get a half day today. And I swear to God, if you were a teacher in my school, and you had just heard about 9-11, and then you walked past my classroom, you would have thought that classroom was full of tiny Muslim extremists. Because we were just like, yes! We were so excited. I remember high-fiving kids. Like, I, rem I remember one kid saying, this is the best day ever. <laughs> a kid said that on OG 9-11. He said that not one of them, one of the anniversaries on original recipe 9-11. He said, this is the best day ever. Uh, I don't know, this has been the best day ever. Uh, you guys have been great. Give it up for your host, Josh. Johnson, everybody. Actually, don't give it up for Evan Johnson. I am livid. I, the fact that he's not Comanche, fuck him. I thought that's why he had the mustache. Cherokee? Cherokee is the most basic tribe. Cherokee is the Diet Coke of Native American tribes. Everybody boo Evan Johnson right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Make some noise for him. Right? <laughs> Thank you. I, the next, the next performer needs a little bit of explaining. Uh, um, uh, I, 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 I do comedy here in Denver, and all the time I'm the only native uh, on the lineup. You know, the token native, just so that they get their little diversity checkbox and everything, and they don't get canceled. And, and so when I finally got like a Native American show, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna have a token white on my show, cause fuck you, okay? Uh, but what I went out and did, I went out and got out the best Caucasian, all right? Uh, winner of the Fort's Funniest 2023, okay? He, he's a founding member of Dead Room Comedy. He, he, he's like an eight out of 10 on the attractiveness scale. Give it up for Elliot Weber, everybody! Oh shit, fuck yeah, man, what's up? Holy shit. I also told Josh I was Comanche. He bought it, I'm here. <laughs> How about it? Fuck yeah, this is amazing, yo. I am Colorado born and raised. Anybody else, where's that? Make some noise. There we go. My true Colorado natives, awesome. <laughs> cool, what about you, no? Not from here? You are, okay. You? Colorado, okay. Think you're tough? Oklahoma? Think you're fucking tough out there, dude? Think you're tough coming to a new state? Who else? Where you at, bros? Give me one more. You? Pick a guy. You and pick a guy. How about this? You guys, after this, we step outside. You guys try and fuck me. I try and not let you at first. <laughs> Think you're tough, huh? Think you're tough coming here? We go outside. It's a little bit of, hey, whoa, no, stop. Pull my hair. 
something like that, bring a friend with you. You're watching, you're from here, that's fine. <laughs> Just outside looking at it go down, that's what we do. And some of you maybe here in the middle are looking at me like you don't think I'd be into something like that. Well, that's just because you can't tell how many dicks somebody sucked by looking at them. <laughs> and by the way, it would change things if you could. We'd look at people we're here with differently, for sure. Who's with family? Who brought their sister? <laughs> What if, what if every time you sucked a dick, you got a freckle? <laughs> and you have a redheaded friend, and you're like, I told you, you're not going to heaven. <laughs> yeah, man, born and raised in Colorado. I worked uh, a lot of my adult life in, in Denver. Denver's basically just full of people that have dietary restrictions <laughs> and do cocaine. I went to brunch last weekend. My buddy and I go to the bathroom together. I'm taking a piss at the urinal like an adult. He does a key bump at 11.17 a.m. on Sunday, which is fine. I don't judge whoever wooed, right? <laughs> That's fine. I don't care if you do that, but just don't come out to the table like he did. Look over the menu and go, ah, I can't believe there's only two gluten-free options here. I'm like, bro, I can't believe you think your health problems are coming from wheat. Your nose is bleeding right now. Let's start there. I worked pretty, pretty much the whole time I've been in Denver as an adult. I've worked in the, the service industry, so I'm very used to the high-maintenance population that exists around here. The type of people that will get mad if you pronounce their name wrong, even though it has a ridiculous spelling. Be like, mm, actually, it is Megan, yeah. Spelled D-I-R-T, Megan, so... It's actually the Christian spelling, if you could. <laughs> Get it right, please. I made one woman really mad one time working in a bar. I spilled a little beer, which can happen, uh, on her baby's head. And, <laughs> <laughs> and she got mad at me. She goes, excuse me, there's beer on my baby. And then I respond, well, then I'll need to see some ID. Uh, <laughs> and I actually said that. I thought that would be funny, a good family-friendly joke to break the tension of the awkward situation. Not true. <laughs> she got so mad. I'll need to see the manager right away. I was like, look, Karen, I mean Megan, I mean Dirt. I'm so sorry, just... You're the one that brought the baby into the bar. Spills happen, wrap it in saran wrap or something, if you're gonna... Help me out. <laughs> uh, make some noise if you currently or have ever worked in the service industry. Where are those people at? Oh, hell yeah. Fuck yeah. Pretty much, pretty much everyone here, cool. That's awesome, I still get the nightmares, the server nightmares. Anybody that just made noise knows exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't worked in the service industry, it's a, I, had a, I had a server nightmare recently where uh, I'm bartending in my dream and there's the ticket printer at the bar, right? And it's just like a scroll just going down onto the floor across and the bar is, 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 is about two miles long and I got a thousand beers, I gotta pour and I gotta run back and forth and the only thing coming out of the tap handles is just ranch and mustard and I don't know why but the <laughs> there's only condiments on the taps and by the way, the bar is on a cruise ship and the ship is sinking and my parents just drowned because I didn't roll silverware. So that's an example of a server nightmare. <laughs> and I told my, my therapist about that dream, and my therapist goes, you might have symptoms of PTSD, right? For working in the service industry, which sounds dramatic, but we'll look at each other, you and everybody that made noise right now, and me, with the same camaraderie and respect as veterans. I'll be like, did you serve? You're like, I served. <laughs> Two tours at a brewery in Rhino. <laughs> Bro, I got friends, didn't make it out of Rhino. I told this joke at Fort Collins last night and someone broke a glass during the joke. I snapped, dude. I went into the, just punched the walk-in freezer. Just like old times, baby. And then I hit on a hostess, I'm back. <laughs> I love Colorado, man. I, I love most of Colorado. There's some wild towns in Colorado. Who's been to Pueblo? <laughs> Fuck yeah, you made it back. <laughs> All four wheels on the car, that's cool, man. <laughs> I did a gig in Pueblo recently. There's a, a building across from the venue I'm performing at that says Pueblo Laser Tag and Tactical Shooting Range. 
Yo. Hey, that seems super dangerous. If you just move those, even just put, a, put an Arby's in between them or something. This is how people answer the phone in Pueblo. Uh, hello, thank you for calling Pueblo Daycare and Pedophile Rehabilitation Center. I lost a couple of you towards the front with the pedophilia. That's okay. It was actually the same people that cheered the loudest for Pueblo, so I get it. Just missing home, all good. <laughs> uh, I did a, a comedy show at a prison for the first time here down in Trinidad, Colorado. Did a, yeah, sure. They were great, great audience. They were an amazing audience like you guys, but they were a uh, captive audience, so they... <laughs> but still good. They were, they were nice, man. It was fun. You got to try and level in that situation, right? Like, what can I say to these people to relate? You know, so I go in there, I'm like, hey, I'm a lot like you guys. I also didn't vote this year. So... I put a cigarette in my butt, you know, before I went in. As a, as a security measure, in case things go south, I'm gonna want some bargaining power on the inside. And I'll tell you this, the crowd was so good, so appreciative, I left prison with more cigarettes in my butt. <laughs> it was, was very cool. Uh, anybody in here LGBTQ plus besides Evan, who's gonna come out any day? <laughs> Hell yeah. I figured. I was, if, if Evan didn't do the Comanche thing, I was going to walk up here and be like, hey, it's me, gay Evan. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, man, I do. I like to hook up with men uh, from time to time. I like to gauge the audience, too, before I get into any sort of gay jokes. I was down in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Did a lot of gay material. The guys did not go well in Albuquerque. <laughs> but I didn't know this. Did you know in the 1960s, all the gay people in Albuquerque moved to Santa Fe? Yeah. So it's not well talked about, not well documented. It's called the uh, Trail of Queers, I believe. Uh, <laughs> there's my native joke. Josh said I could say that one. <laughs> I think everybody's like at least bi now here in Denver, right? It used to be cool. It used to be a unique thing. At this point now, my friends are like, we get it. You suck dicks. We're also Democrats. Relax. <laughs> Who are you trying to impress? <laughs> Buy dudes are like Tesla cars. In 2008, it was pretty cool if you saw one, but at this point, it just seems pretentious. <laughs> and I have one plugged into my garage. <laughs> Charging them for tonight. <laughs> Uh, so I, I didn't identify as queer as a kid, obviously, and then at some point in college, I started hooking up with men. I had to start telling people that's what was going on. Uh, there were certain people in my life that something, thought something happened to me that turned me gay, which is absurd. That's obviously not how it works, but I love to pretend that's how it works. <laughs> so I was at the gym the other day, obviously. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, I'm in the locker room, I've got headphones in, I'm naked. There's a guy behind me, headphones in, he's naked. We don't know we're next to each other. We both bend over at the same time and we touch butt to butt. It's awkward, we both jump up, we're looking at each other and I'm like, oh man, you're gay. <laughs> yep, ha, gotcha, <laughs> you're gay now. Um, and he got upset with me dude. and I was like, hey man, I don't make the rules but you should call your dad. Uh, And then I realize he's with his son, and I'm like, oh shit, I am so sorry. I, at least I didn't spill it on your baby. Is that, <laughs> wrap it in saran wrap if you don't want that to happen. Keep everybody safe. <laughs> I like to mess with straight dudes. I, you know, I got a lot of friends that look like me but aren't gay, and they suck, you know? <laughs> um, and it's fun to mess with straight bros. The best time to do it, by the way, is Halloween. Because you can go to any, any party, any bar, you go up to any guy and just put gay in front of whatever the costume is. You got to try it. It's so fun. <laughs> just walk up to someone and be like, oh, wow, gay Shrek. Cool. <laughs> They're immediately self-conscious walking around the rest of the night like, man, what about my Shrek is gay? <laughs> and that's best case. Some people get mad, but you just got to keep going and try guessing too. It, you got to be like, oh, don't tell me. No, 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 no. Okay, gay Buzz Lightyear, Buzz Light Queer. Nice, that's good. 
That's good. I like that. And then maybe that's a person that gets mad about it. They're like, oh, fucking no, dude. Just actually straight, white, fucking Christian, Buzz Lightyear. So, uh, just Buzz Lightyear, but in God's eyes. So, that's my costume. And that's fine, too. You just move on. You're like, hey, if you need Woody, I'll be at the bar. Uh, there was uh, one person who was hard for me to come out to. Is, uh, my best friend from high school very religious, strongly, uh, strongly Christian. And I have to tell him I've been hooking up with men. I don't know how he's gonna handle the news, uh, but he takes it pretty well. He gives me a flyer to his church uh, <laughs> that says, you can't climb your way to heaven with a handful of penis. Um, <laughs> which is hurtful, but also true. If you've ever tried to climb a ladder with something in your hand, very tough to do. Pro tip. Put it in your mouth. Uh, <laughs> you guys liked that because it was also informative. That's cool and useful. I like that about that joke. I found this out recently. I found out skipping is the most efficient way to travel. Did you know that? They've done studies. The most efficient way to get from point A to point B with your legs is to skipping, but I hardly ever, especially adults, see people skipping, and that disappoints me. And I'm not trying to defend the movement. I get it. This is, this, this is not pretty. This is the hybrid car of movements. It's not... This is the Prius of foot traffic, okay? I, I get it. But I feel like we, just got, we can't care so much what people think about us, you know? You gotta just do it, because imagine what you could miss if you weren't traveling efficiently. And all I want from this is just to see people skipping when they're in a hurry. I want to go to DIA and someone be like, come on, stay together. Come on, gang. Let's go, boarding group B, that's us. This is fucking Southwest. I want a window seat. Let's go. <laughs> I think that's the main thing, man. I, I care too much. It's what, it's what I'm working on. I think it's something we could all work on a little bit. Um, just, just be yourself and don't care what strangers think of you. That's what I like to tell myself. I tried on three shirts before I went to the dentist, so. <laughs> In execution, not really happening. Um, that's never paid off, by the way. I've never been leaving the dentist, and they're like, hey, remember to floss every day. Also, great fit. <laughs> like it, you did the, yeah, the shirt and the shoes is good. It was, we appreciate that. And it's worse when it's personality-wise. Like, I really want to be liked by people. And uh, I moved recently, uh, and there's a coffee shop two blocks away from the house I moved into. And the same kind of problem kicks in. I'm very excited because I want to be a regular at this coffee shop. I want to know the other regulars. I want to know the staff. I want us to get along, you know? Um, so I go there for the first time, just, just the other day. Uh, and it goes well. Order coffee, uh, pay card, tip cash. Here's the problem. Barista turns around, doesn't see me put cash in the tip jar. No good, right? Because you remember, I worked in the service industry. They got to know. <laughs> that I'm a good tipper, so I do what you shouldn't do, um, and I take just my money, not everybody's, but just my money. <laughs> I go to take it out of the tip jar, and Speedy Gonzalez barista turns around, catches me red-handed, goes, um, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, so I have no choice, I just go, oh, I'm so sorry. Nobody fucking move, nobody move! Open the register, laptops on the counter, let's go! And I robbed that place just to make sure that everybody likes me. <laughs> but then I remember my advice, what I tell you and what we should do. And I'm like, I should stop. I should just not care what people think about me. So I took the laptops and I took the register drawer and I just skipped home, baby. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. My name's Elliot. This has been amazing. Keep it going for the lovely Joshua Emerson. Uh, now you see why we only have one Caucasian on the show, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, ladies and gents and everybody in between, uh, we've reached your headliner for the evening, yes. Uh, uh, hailing from a little place called Los Angeles. I don't know if you heard of it. There's an ocean on the, on the left side of it. <laughs> she's Choctaw, a little American outlaw. Uh, she's a writer on a whole bunch of things. Most recently, Clone High, uh, streaming on Max right now. Hey, make some noise for Sienna East!
I give up. A little too tall for me, but it's fine. It's fine. We're all good. We're having a good time. Hi, Denver! <laughs> Woo! It's so great to be out here in Denver, Denver, Colorado. Really great to be out here in Denver. Uh, it turns out if you drive for an hour in Denver, you end up at a different place. Last night we were in Fort Collins. I went on stage and I was like, great to be here, Denver. Love you guys, Denver. Eventually some guy was like, this is Fort Collins. <laughs> but it's weird. It's weird to live in a place where you can drive for an hour and be somewhere else. Like, in Los Angeles, you drive for an hour and, like, you're almost at the dentist. <laughs> so, weird. Very exciting to be on a Native comedy night. I love anything where a bunch of Natives are here. A bunch of Natives are here tonight. I love it. I'm so ex Yes! Oh! Love whenever there's a lot of Natives because it makes, for me at least, uh, being Native be normal because, like, in L.A., not a whole lot of natives, right? And so when you tell someone you're native, they're like, oh my God, really? A Native American? That's crazy. <laughs> I don't think it's that crazy, because like, I've been native my whole life. I wake up every day, I'm native. I think it'd be so crazy to live your whole life like tall. <laughs> or with a penis. Sometimes I imagine my life tall and with a penis. <laughs> but it's not the life, I love the life I have. I love being short, I love being native, but I hate, I hate when people ask you like, what part native are you? Like it's their business. I finally started to answer that for them though. I'm like, you know, the hair, the face, that's native, but like the boob part, the butt part, that's white. <laughs> I do have white girl tits, it's really tragic. People have gotten more polite, though, about like how they ask it, but it doesn't make it better. I feel like sometimes I'm on some sick, twisted game show that's like, how much native are you? And like the prize is like a weird approving nod from a stranger. <laughs> In this fantasy game show, Johnny Depp's in the audience, he really wants on stage, we're like, no! And he's like, why is Bob Barker there? And we're like, he's native, look it up. But at a native comedy night with one token white comedian, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't do a little bit of Thanksgiving material. Uh, woo! But not cranberries, not turkey, it's bitchin' and it's moanin'. Cause I have issues. Thanksgiving has changed a lot, like the perceptions around it, like in the past 10 years. It's crazy how quickly things have changed. Like 10 years ago, People were still putting on that propaganda Thanksgiving play. You know the play, you're sitting on the floor in a classroom, a kindergartner walks out. Th thank you, Squanto. <laughs> the Indians are our friends now. Like, you know the play, you've seen it. Doesn't really exist anymore. And I'm not saying it's bad that things have changed so quickly, but like, sometimes when things change quickly, it gets a little bit messy. Like if I'm driving the wrong way in my car and I have to take a hard turn to go the right way, spill all my car trash. I'm, that was a friendly laugh. I'm glad you all have car trash too. I was so worried I'd get up here and say it. My mom would be like, why did you tell them? But Thanksgiving, I noticed the change when I was in college, the way people saw it. And what would happen was I never went home for Thanksgiving. I stayed on campus, it's expensive, it's a stupid holiday. And so on Thanksgiving day, I'm walking across campus and I see a girl from class. She sees me, she beelines over to me. And she goes, Sienna, happy Thanksgiving. I go, what did you say to me? Cause like I had never heard this before. And she goes, Thanksgiving. She's really excited to educate me. It's like a rebrand of Thanksgiving. It's like, thanks, we took your land and your food and your... And she stops. And she realizes who she's saying this to. The cogs in her brain start to turn. She panics. I'm not celebrating it, we're not celebrating. It's an acknowledgement. I mean, I mean, we have to know our history. I mean, come on. I mean, th that's, that's a responsibility of us. And I feel really bad, because like, that's not how she thought this was gonna go down. 
She thought, we're gonna get in her shoes. She's walking across campus when she sees me, the only Native American person she's ever known. <laughs> Beelines over to me, and she was gonna go, Sienna, happy Thanksgiving. And I was supposed to go, whoa, woke points. And we high five, double high five. I would go, thanks for acknowledging, acknowledging, acknowledging the violence and genocide of my people today. And she would go, it's the least I can do. <laughs> Not how it went down. Uh, I do feel bad for making fun of her a little bit cause like, she tried and she failed. And trying and failing is a part of life. I never want to denigrate anyone for trying and failing. It's how things change, it's how we get what we want, it's how shit gets better. I know all about trying and failing because I love to dirty talk. <laughs> dirty talking is all about trying and failing. <laughs> you don't know what you like hearing until you've heard it. And it's not something you can do solo. You can't practice. <laughs> can't be whacking it like, oh my God, I love this, my, uh, doesn't, doesn't pan out. But the thing is, you need a partner who also likes the dirty talk, right? And so one time I went home with this guy, very nice guy, different than what I was used to, and we get to his apartment, he lights all these candles, he turns off the lights, and he starts playing music. And I go, why'd you do that? And he says, I don't like to have sex in silence. And I go, sex in silence? There's no silence during sex. There's the sounds of sex and me talking. <laughs> I told this story to my sister and she said, ugh, I would hate to have sex with you. That's the reason my sister would hate to have sex with me. <laughs> she really figured out the problem. The best part of this is the first time I ever told that joke, I didn't tell my sister I had a problem with it. I invited her to a show. I did it. I pointed her out. She was so upset, but what's the point of being a comedian if it's not to torture your friends and family in front of strangers? <laughs> Glad that got a woo. So, to finish up dirty talking, sometimes you do find someone who likes dirty talking and you like them. And this guy and I one time, we really hit it off, you know? We're having a good time, we go home together, we're making out, we're in sync, we're talking, we're chatting, super in sync, you know, like Timberlake and Fatone. I'm kidding. Uh, I did have a goatee at the time. Once again, kidding. But we're having a really good time. And at one point, I'm on top, I guess I wanted you to know that because I wanted you to know what kind of girl I am. <laughs> I'm on top and you know, we're going at it and he goes, oh yeah, you like that, you slut. And I stopped because uh, I did not like that. <laughs> the room got real tense, it got real quiet. We're just sitting there. He's looking at me and he knows he's done something wrong but he's not quite sure what. He's trying to figure it out and he looks me in the eyes and he goes, whore? <laughs> not the problem, of course. Uh, but we did end up talking about it. We did end up trying, failing, and fixing it. And the thing is, we had a wonderful relationship for like years after that with great sex. We just only had sex using proper nouns. <laughs> so it'd be like, you know, we're having sex and I I'm him now, this is, I that, now I want you this picture. Um, you know, and I'm fucking me or whatever. And <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, you like that, Sienna de Julio East? <laughs> it feels good here on Houston Avenue on my Ikea Schlafkin bed. <laughs> That's not the sound he makes when he comes. I mean, when he came. I mean, we broke up. 
I mean, I'm sure he's still coming just like with, I know it's with other people. I've seen the girl and I, that's fine. I mean, I'm fine. Their anniversary is not coming up. Her birthday isn't on our anniversary. It's fine, I'm fine, it's good. <laughs> this wasn't two days ago. I'm not super mature. I am 30 though, if that's surprising to anyone. Uh, thank you for the woos, 30, proud of it. Uh, I do look young for my age. The problem with looking young for your age, you think, would be that sometimes when you go on a date, the waiter brings you a kid's menu. <laughs> but it's not. The problem is telling jokes about looking young for your age in Los Angeles. Don't do it. People are so sensitive. I told a couple jokes about one time, and a lady came up to me after a show, and she was like, I hope you look like shit when you're 40. It's like, I'll never talk about this again. Um, I am 30, I am kind of immature. I'm realizing that there's things I thought I grew out of that I didn't. Like, you know when you're a kid and you didn't get invited to an event you wouldn't have enjoyed, but you're upset about it anyway? Like, okay, the logic sounds messy, but when I was in middle school, this girl was having a birthday party and she invited all her friends and all my friends, but she didn't invite me. And I was really sad about it. And it was gonna be a boy-girl dance party. And there was gonna be grinding and slow dancing. Two activities I was not interested in. Um, I was more of like a Harry Potter fanfic tween, so I was horny but in private. <laughs> so she doesn't invite me and all my friends go and I'm like really upset, I feel super left out. And apparently I still have that issue because I wouldn't have enjoyed the party but I wanted to go. Fast forward to the future, past Miley Cyrus being Hannah Montana, past Miley Cyrus hating being Hannah Montana, back to Miley Cyrus singing Hannah Montana songs on Disney Plus. If you're not following like your timelines according to Miley Cyrus's, like I'm sorry, sucks to suck. Uh, remember, I'm young. <laughs> fast forward today, I'm 30. And my best friend, I'll, t I'll give you the picture of her real fast so you know who to picture. My best friend is an angel. She is a gift from God. She is the sweetest, nicest person. And sometimes when we're drunk, I'll be like, oh my God, I love you, bitch. And one time she started crying and she goes, why do you always call me bitch? Why can't you call me friend? This is my best friend, I love her. And the problem is, and this is gonna sound, you know, I don't know how it's gonna sound, she keeps getting invited to orgies. <laughs> and it's just like, I, I also would like to be invited to the orgy. If my best friend's going, if she's going, why can't I would, I also would like to go to the orgy. Thank you very much if my best friend is also going. They know me, they could invite me. The problem with that is I don't think I would like the activities at an orgy. There are three reasons I really think I wouldn't like it. The first one, and I've said a lot of shit on stage so far, but this one feels the most intimate to me. I really get off to power dynamics. And so if there are 10 people in a room, it's like, who's in charge? Is it me? Am I in charge? Problem number one. Problem number two, is it would be really hard for me to tell if everyone at the orgy has washed their hands. <laughs> Claps, I trust that person. <laughs> hand washing is the most important part of sex to me. It goes hand washing, orgasming, listening to the Killing Eve soundtrack on repeat. Good taste, good taste. The third problem with me at an orgy is when I'm in a group of people and one person's telling a story and people stop listening, I feel compelled, no, determined, to listen to the whole story. <laughs> I don't want them to feel left out. So as they talk, I'm there with them, nodding, making eye contact, and smiling until the end. So at the orgy, when there's some sad fuck who can't get off and everyone else has moved on, I'll still be there, <laughs> nodding, making eye contact, and smiling until they finish. 
Yeah. Um, so I'm not do I, I'm not invited. It's fine. So I'm immature. I'm 30, and I'm also old. However, I think you become old when you start complaining about what the kids do. It has nothing to do with age or looks. It's when you start going, back in my day and kids these days. You know when an old person's like, back in my day, I had to walk in two miles in the snow to go to school. And you're like, sorry, your life sucks. Like, I don't know what to do about that. So I turned old recently. And I can tell you the exact moment. My best friend and I, Angel, gift from God, uh, she and I were talking, and we start bitching, we start moaning, we start complaining, you know, climate change, uh, men, uh, taxes, the things girls talk about, bitching, moaning, and I start, you know, going off, and I go, yeah, and these days, it's too easy for the kids to watch anime. You're laughing, but it is. It's so easy. It's so easy. It's absolutely, it's absolutely not fair. Kids just go on Netflix, pull up any anime they want. When I was a kid, I had to work for anime. When I was a kid, I was judged for anime. I earned my anime. You guys know the struggle, then I can tell. You're going on the family computer, because there's no laptops, there's no privacy. You're on Google finding websites. You go on kissanime.net. You're dodging ads for Russian singles like it's the Matrix. I'm 11. <laughs> you finally find your episode and you think, oh my God, great. So you sit down to watch it and that's when your grandma comes in. She doesn't know about anime. She does know about hentai. So she goes, oh, what are you watching? And I have to correct her. And I go, Nana, this is my favorite show. And they're just cousins who love each other. <laughs> Fruits Basket, actually incredible anime, best anime, they're cursed. I swear to God, it makes sense. You should watch it. It's on Hulu. So it's very easy to watch now on Hulu. I do, I love, uh, because I'm a writer, I love watching everything. I watch anime, I watch every single TV show, I watch every single movie, I watch important indies and 100 hour long superhero movies, I watch it all. The thing I think I've liked the most in the past couple years was Robert Pattinson's The Batman. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Depressed Batman finds clues to get the Riddler. The best movie. I do think I liked it so much because I found Batman to be incredibly relatable. Like, I was like, this is a really relatable Batman. It's like, the Batman's deciphering cryptic messages from a man he's obsessed with. I'm deciphering cryptic messages from a man I'm obsessed with. The Batman lets his mascara run down his face. I let my mascara run down my face. The Batman is struggling with mental illness. <laughs> if you hadn't figured it out before this, like, uh, that's on you. Very clearly mentally ill right here. And it's a, it's a hustle, it's hard. But you know, you do it day by day. I'm not the fun kind of mental illness, like Natalie Portman making you realize that life is worth living. But I'm also not the cool mental illness, like Steve Jobs uh, washing his feet in toilets and making the iPhone. <laughs> I'm the kind of mental ill where you're like, haha, what? <laughs> so specifically, I have OCD and I'm a hypochondriac. I know, two mental illnesses. I've been told maybe a third, I'm a little bit greedy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, laughing at my own joke. Anyway, it's sad I get to. I'm really afraid of getting like sick. It is like something that I get really fixated on. It puts me in a panic. I can't think straight, I can't see straight. If I think I've gotten sick, I start to like lose it a little bit. And so there was a point in time where I was constantly checking my lymph nodes. I was constantly looking at the back of my throat. I would go to urgent care so regularly that the doctor pulled me aside and was like, hey, Sienna, we love to see you, but uh, Maybe you should talk to someone. And I've never been broken up with by a doctor before. 
so that was kind of hard. My mom, though, she thought she had a solution at one point because, like, she, uh, I was kind of freaking out. She was like, if you ever think you got germs in your throat, you know, take a shot of alcohol. It cleans out the whole throat. <laughs> I'd like to clarify, my white mom said this. My native dad did not say that. <laughs> so um, this became my comfort. Take a shot of alcohol whenever I think I've got an illness in my throat. The problem was, uh, you can't do that everywhere. <laughs> I was an office PA at this point in time, like at the height of kind of like not knowing I was crazy. And an office PA is like the person who like gets files and picks up coffees for set, uh, TV shows, movies. Sometimes an actor loses their car. You look for their car for two days. <laughs> that really happened. So we had an AD, an assistant director, and he came in and he was sick. And he was like, <laughs> he's coughing. I don't even want to fake cough. That's how actual afraid I am of this. Um, so he's coughing everywhere and I start to panic. But I can't take a shot because like, I'm at work. And I'm not like a white man in the 50s. <laughs> I'm trying to see a white guy in the audience. I want to confirm that that was just in the 50s. <laughs> and you guys aren't still secretly doing this. If anyone wants to tell me after the show, I'm really good at keeping secrets. <laughs> so, I'm freaking out, I'm at work, and I go to run errands and I see the solution. The solution is a bottle of mouthwash. And I'm like, great. I read in Stephen King's memoir that he drank mouthwash. I'll just drink this mouthwash. <laughs> the disappointment in your voices. I buy this mouthwash, I'm super excited, I get outside the store, I rip it open, I go to chug it, and I start choking, and I spit up everywhere. I'm in this parking lot right outside the store, and I can't breathe, and I'm like dying, because apparently they put something in mouthwash that keeps you from drinking it, that makes you spit it up. And Stephen King did not tell me that. <laughs> As a native, this is actually my biggest issue with Stephen King. So after I spit it all up, I look up and I see the sweetest old lady in front of me. And because when you're panicked and you're manic, you can't tell what's going on, I realize she's probably been there the whole time. <laughs> I have no idea what to say. So I say, I'm sorry, and I get in my car and I drive away as fast as I can. And I always wonder like, does she think I'm dead? I am, you know, I struggle with mental illness, but like, I still have things that like I enjoy and I'm happy about in life. Like, um, I'm on my period this week and I love getting my period. It may, thank you, it may sound controversial, but like in the current cultural climate, like, I love the updates, please keep it up. We can't afford to miss a minute. Virginia says you have to be on time. Yeah, thank you, applause for my uterus. However, as I've just really talked about periods, what I don't like is the end of my period. And if you have a uterus, you get this. If you don't have a uterus, I'll explain. <laughs> periods don't have like a clear end date. You'll have like three to five days of flow and then it's just like you're ambushed by period. <laughs> you're walking around and it's just like It's just ruining my underwear, destroying my life. It's unfair because I want my period to end. I want to be able to put on my nice white underwear and not be a fool because I think it's over. I think it's safe. And then it's like Katy Perry at the Kids' Choice Awards. Some of you have seen the clip. It's the best clip ever. Katy Perry walks out on stage all done up. She thinks she's safe. She thinks the show's over. She opens this box and just wrecked slime just hits her in the face and she's slipping around and she's dripping and she's a mess and she's wrecked. That's my underwear. <laughs> However, um, I do have the ability to fix this. So if you don't want this to happen, listen up. Have sex at the end of your period. It makes sense. Thank you for the one woo. Trust me, it's actually science. Here's what you do.
picture it like this. You know when you've got a ketchup bottle and there's ketchup stuck in the back of the bottle? You can't get it out. You shake it, nothing. You bang on it, it works a little. So you get a knife and you jam it up in there and you're banging and you're jamming and you're banging and you're jamming and you're banging and you're jamming till it's nice and loose and then knocks the period right out of you. Knocks the period right out of you. And before I leave, I'll leave you with one visual. I'm the kind of girl where both my period blood and my ketchup are brown. Thank you so much. I didn't know period blood could be brown, you know? I just swarped that shit up, okay? <laughs> like a fucking oyster, dog! <laughs> uh, make some noise for Jana one more time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's our show. In fact, can we have all the comics come out? Please! Absolutely. I don't know if they're here. Are they in the building still? Did they leave? Can the comics please come on stage right now? I feel like, uh, 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 the, oh, there's one. There's two. There's three. That's all of them. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out. It means a lot to me. Good job to all the comics tonight. Thank you. That's our show. Bye-bye.